Ever wondered why Adolf Hitler started World War II? To understand this, we need to go back to 1919, to the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. This peace treaty, signed in the aftermath of World War I, imposed severe penalties on Germany, one of the key aggressors in the conflict. The conditions were harsh, massive reparations that crippled the economy, loss of territory that stirred nationalistic sentiments, and disarmament that left the nation feeling vulnerable. The interwar period, from the end of World War I to the start of World War II, was a time of tremendous hardship for Germany. The nation was grappling with economic challenges and hyperinflation. Political instability was rampant, and the Weimar Republic, established after Kaiser Wilhelm II's abdication, struggled to maintain stability. The German population, faced with these severe hardships, grew increasingly resentful. In this climate of discontent, extremist political groups began to emerge, capitalizing on the widespread resentment and promising a return to greatness. One such group was led by a charismatic and virulent orator, Adolf Hitler. These hardships and widespread resentment set the stage for the rise of extremist political groups, including the one led by Adolf Hitler. In the midst of Germany's turmoil, a charismatic and fiery orator emerged, Adolf Hitler. He joined the German Workers' Party in 1919, which later evolved into the notorious National Socialist German Workers' Party, or the Nazi Party. Hitler's ideologies, deeply rooted in extreme nationalism and anti-Semitism, resonated with many Germans who were seeking a scapegoat for their hardships. As his influence grew, so did his political ambitions. By 1933, through a series of political maneuvers, Hitler found himself in the position of Chancellor of Germany. But he didn't stop there. With the death of President Paul von Hindenburg in 1934, Hitler seized the opportunity to consolidate power, merging the positions of President and Chancellor. This move marked the establishment of a totalitarian regime under Hitler's rule, suppressing dissent and instating a dictatorship. With control over Germany, Hitler set his sights on reversing the restrictions of the Treaty of Versailles. One of Hitler's top priorities was to rebuild Germany's military might, a clear violation of the Treaty of Versailles. This was a bold move, considering the stringent restrictions imposed on Germany's military capabilities by the treaty. Hitler perceived these restrictions as an affront to Germany's sovereignty and a barrier to his grand vision for a greater Germany. He embarked on an ambitious rearmament program, investing heavily in the manufacturing of sophisticated weapons, expanding the navy, and exponentially increasing the size of the German army. Simultaneously, he instituted mandatory military service, ensuring a steady supply of trained soldiers for his revitalized military. The international community watched with growing alarm as Germany rapidly transformed into a formidable military power. Attempts were made to curb Hitler's aggressive militarization through diplomatic channels. However, these efforts proved ineffective. The League of Nations, the precursor to the United Nations, was virtually powerless in the face of Hitler's blatant disregard for the treaty. With a revitalized military, Hitler was ready to pursue his expansionist ambitions. Hitler's vision of a greater Germany and Lebensraum for the Aryan race drove his aggressive foreign policy. This vision wasn't just a romantic notion of unity, it was a meticulously strategized plan of territorial expansion, one that aimed to unite all German-speaking peoples under one banner and recover territories lost in the aftermath of World War I. The first significant step on this path was the reoccupation of the Rhineland in 1936. The Rhineland was a demilitarized zone as per the Treaty of Versailles, and Hitler's move was a clear violation of this agreement. But this audacious maneuver was met with a surprising international response, or rather, the lack of it. The world watched, and the world let it pass. Emboldened by the lack of international retaliation, Hitler turned his sights to Austria. Sharing a robust German-speaking population, Austria was a ripe fruit for the picking in Hitler's expansionist vision. In March of 1938, German troops marched into Austria, and the Anschluss, the annexation of Austria into Nazi Germany, was completed. The international community expressed concern, but again, did little to prevent it. The Munich Agreement of 1938 was a pivotal moment in Hitler's expansionist journey. In a well-intentioned but ultimately doomed attempt to appease Hitler and avoid war, British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain and French Prime Minister Edouard Daladier signed the agreement. This allowed Germany to annex the Sudetenland, a German-speaking region of Czechoslovakia. This capitulation to Hitler's demands was seen by many as a policy of appeasement. 
a policy that would come back to haunt the world. Hitler's aggressive expansionist policy, unchecked by the international community, ultimately led to the outbreak of World War II. So, why did Adolf Hitler start World War II? It boils down to the harsh Treaty of Versailles, the economic and political turmoil that followed, Hitler's charismatic rise to power, the rebuilding of the German military, and his expansionist ambitions. Understanding these factors provides a comprehensive view of why Hitler initiated World War II.